Okay, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. Okay, this morning we've been looking at all things economy, really. Everything seems to link into the economy. Uh, yesterday we were speaking about uh, food scarcity and the uh, role that, uh, you know, scarcity of funds to even buy any kind of food product, um, how they all factor into each other. Okay, today we'll take another arm uh, of it. I'm talking here about uh, the Binance uh, Exchange. Uh, the Binance Exchange, uh, many Nigerians, well, I don't know how to put that, uh, uh, some Nigerians will know, is an online exchange where users can trade cryptocurrencies. This uh, Binance Exchange platform actually has its own uh, blockchain, um, as these things are, uh, they are known, uh, BNB. But I, I guess what's important for extraction for this particular conversation is that uh, following the Monetary Policy Committee meeting, the central bank director has declared that um, there's a lot going on with Binance that is not as transparent as it needs to be. Uh, consequently, they were stopping operations with them. And then Binance has got into one trouble or the other. Um, uh, people who have followed the news will know that uh, uh, Binance has pleaded guilty to and uh, has agreed to pay $4.3 billion to settle criminal money laundering charges that have been levied by the U.S. Department of Justice. The founder of Binance, you know, he pled so. And um, he's, uh, he's ple he pleaded guilty and has agreed to step down from his position. Uh, his criminal trial is scheduled to, um, has been postponed to the 30th of April. So Binance in a lot of um, headwinds. And then on top of all of that, two executives of theirs flew into the country as is probably well known by now, uh, earlier in the week. And, um, well, following interactions with our security officers, especially led by the NSA's office, um, they have been detained. I understand that uh, an order has been obtained uh, where, where, whereby they are allowed to be de detained for 12 uh, days. Um, they have not satisfied the Niger their Nigerian, you know, hosts as to the questions that were asked and have said that, um, take us to our embassies. We, we don't have anything to say until we get to our embassies. Nigeria has levied, um, what, a hefty fine on them. And um, uh, we don't know where that is right now. But I suppose it's important to know that the um, Securities and Exchange Commission said that they are not registered by them nor regulated by them. And this points to the $26 billion that the central bank the, uh, governor has said that has just passed through Binance and that we don't have any idea of where it came from. Okay, enough from me. That's by way of background. Uh, and now to get a sort of um, insight and uh, personal perspective uh, into the effect of this and what Binance is, uh, is uh, an expert of ours. He's a man of many, many hats. At the one time, Dr. Okwe Banwo, he's a lawyer, he's a public affairs analyst, and I am now bringing him in for his expertise in, as far as um, this currency, uh, I beg your pardon, these um, crypto exchanges um, are concerned. A fine morning to you, Dr. Okwe Banwo. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you again. Our pleasure, our pleasure always. So tell me Thank your, you, uh, especially when you, you see, a lot. I don't believe that uh, cryptocurrency has exactly become like pure water, as we say locally. So, um, uh, to a lot of people, it's probably going to be a bit on the esoteric side, uh, beyond knowing that, well, it has to do with this new money they're talking about. You can't trace it, you, uh, and uh, governments all over the world generally uh, don't like it. But in particular, Binance does not operate in the U.S. and the U.K. because of, ahem, how shall we put it, regulatory difficulties. Now, Dr. Bango, uh, tell me your impression of Binance and the action that Nigeria has taken. Well, thank you so much, Egbo, for having me again. It's been a while, and I'm excited to be here. Our pleasure. Uh, yes, yes, I think uh, first we need to clarify some things here. Even you just uh, made some what I would consider are some inaccurate uh, uh, statements. Uh, Binance is actually operational in the U.S. 
even right now, I see use it right now as I'm talking to you, I have an account there. But before we go into it, I really want, especially the youths, to really understand these issues because the way it's been taken on Twitter is almost as if uh, the federal government is trying to deprive them of their source of livelihood. Okay, uh, need uh, to understand okay. I, I beg your pardon. I, I do beg your pardon. I take, I take the point that you made that it still exists in the U.S. I should have properly said its operations are limited in the U.S. and the U.K. Yes. Yes, it's actually, uh, yes, it's better regulated. Thank you so much for that. So I want us to understand this. It's about time Nigeria resists the rape of our economy by Binance and other cryptocurrency platforms. I don't think this is about uh, uh, the government or anybody depriving our uh, youths or people like us from making our money online. I do cryptocurrency, definitely, even right here in the US. I have an account on Binance. But the point is the very same things that Binance was fined $4 billion for is what they are doing in Nigeria. And Nigeria is especially special over it in the sense that a lot of people may not know that Nigeria is number one in cryptocurrency trading all over the world. Well, I that's know right. some may, may not believe that. Go Google it. So US, that is number nine, okay, in the world, not number eight, not number two, seven, not number six, number nine, has decided to make sure they do not ruin their economy. The things they are doing in the US that they are fined four billion and their CEO was indicted for is what they are doing in Nigeria. So why shouldn't we have them arrested? I've been talking about Ikoyi economics and Fadeyi economics. This is where we use it. They have come to our country. Now we need to put Ikoyi approach on them, charge them properly so that the world can see what they've done, and then use the Fadeyi economy to hold them down. We will delay the trial until they pay all that money. Let me tell you guys something. This is what Binance is doing, and I'm speaking more to the youth to understand that this company and people like them are the ones winning our economy and we need to react. And I'm very excited. Uh, people know that I really, I, I, they will say I'm a, I'm a supporter of this government uh, during election, but I believe in my country and I believe in what this government is doing. Finance, they, uh, they were convicted in the US for failure to have an effective anti-money laundering program. We have anti-money laundering laws in Nigeria. They are violating it. Violating currency trading laws of the US. They are trading Nigerian Naira. Yes, exactly. Where they get the license to do it. Exactly. Okay? They, 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 they are transacting a, a, a stuff in the currency of Nigeria. They are violating all our laws, and they do it because our governments don't hold them accountable. So now that this government have said, no, we're not going to do that with you guys. You're going you're gonna to pay. I think we should rally around them. There is nothing wrong with cryptocurrency trading by itself. But you needed to follow the rules of the companies operate, uh, countries operating on so that they do not take advantage of our economy. Look at what they did to the Naira. Who are they to be setting the price of Naira with this peer to peer thing they are doing? Which is, is one of the which is one of the problems, which, which is one of the main problems that the central bank had with them. They accused them of yes. arbitrarily setting the Naira dollar exchange rate. 100%. And they, they, but they, they, they think Nigeria because nobody caused them to order. That's why they can even be bold enough to travel down to Nigeria. If they know themselves, they should not have even come. But now that they've come, Nigeria should arrest them, charge them properly, let the, 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 the charges be very public so that the world can see we are not doing jankara on them. Then we'll use our father uh, 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 justice system where that trial will be delayed for years. I have a, some clients here, just because they transfer some uh, currency money to their account, they've been in jail for two and a half years. They have not even charged them for anything in America. Because they are saying all the money they took out, all the transactions they did, they have to pay the money. Why should Nigeria be different? And this is where I think the youths can support our nation by talking about that. You yes. can come. Yes. But you have, to, you have to obey our law. So I'm... Uh, 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 with the CBN on this one, I think they are, they are doing it right. Everybody comes in and takes, care, uh, takes advantage of us. And for those of you who are saying, oh, how can Nigeria find Binance when they are not in Nigeria? You don't know how international law works. If we charge them properly and we get them convicted, even U.S. will help us to recover our money because governments are all very wary of cryptocurrency 
ruining their systems as, as good as all of us want it. I trade crypto. I'm not a hypocrite. I trade crypto. I have accounts. But I think they should follow the laws of the country they are operating in. And to me, finance is a prime example. They are prioritizing building up their customer base uh, uh, over obeying the laws of the country they operate in. And that's one of the things that they are found guilty of in the U.S. And they are paying U.S. But when it comes to Nigeria, even we Nigerians, we are ridiculing ourselves, oh, they cannot pay us. Of course they will pay us. Mm. If, the, if the CBN governor uh, decides to throw the book at them, charge them, there's at least seven counts, okay, that exactly what they did in the U.S. that they've done with us. Like I've said before, they violated our money laundering laws. They have exactly. violated our set They have violated our set laws. They have, uh, 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 they, they have tampered with our currency. It is obvious. It is there. So why shouldn't they be elder? All of them, Coinbase and all these other people. Because Nigeria, we have a struggling economy. Many of us are, are prone to gamblers, put it that way. We yep, are trying yep. to figure out a way, let's make money. So exactly. which is okay, but then they then come in, they take advantage of us. Sometimes on their, on their, on their exchange, when a Nigerian has a problem, you have nobody to go talk to. They just take your money and you go and uh, they turn Nigeria it, that's why a company like Omega Pro can come from Dubai, take over 200 billion naira from Nigeria's economy, an investment company that is a is scam forex, but nobody's holding them accountable. We, I came to Nigeria to file charges against Omega Pro with EFCC. You know what they were telling me? The guys that they are saying, oh, they will give some money to Nigerians and then nothing will happen. But uh -huh. this time, I'm glad it's public. Exactly. All Nigerians should make sure our government do not let them go. They must pay. Because it, it, what they've done is exactly what they've been found guilty in the U.S. Indeed. Um, it, it, it's so interesting. nobody should tell me that. Uh, that yeah. it, it, it's interesting when you said you came home to try and uh, get them to be prosecuted by the EFCC and they had, you know, thrown you that um, uh, horrible line about uh, we'll just simply, you know, spread some cash around and nothing will happen. It just reminds me of President Tinumbu the other day in Qatar, and he got a flag, he got flag from it for some Nigerians. I wouldn't necessarily say most Nigerians. When the president said that, look, anybody ask you for anything that is improper, uh, let us know about it. It's not business as usual. It's, and a lot of people, you recall, we gave the president a lot of flag. Uh, according to those ones, he was demarketing Nigeria. It's that we know the system. We, you've just spoken here. Uh, the, the president is streetwise, perhaps unlike a lot of ordinary presidents. He knows what's going on. And he said, look, if anybody tries any hanky-panky, they are on their own. It is not from us. I wouldn't be surprised if in the what? past people hadn't been, you know, dropping the name of high government officials, not excluding the president uh, in, in, their, in their shenanigans that this must be done. Let, let, let's, be frank. let's be frank. Billion, billion, billion dollars that is being done. $26 billion done on Binance Nigeria just in the last one year alone. Yes. What do you think he's doing? The average youth doesn't have that kind of money. Some of them, $1,000, $200 is what they are using. Yes. The people doing this are the banks and the governors. Let's just call it as it is. When they collect their allocations, they convert some of it into forex and at whatever price. So I think why we should go after Binance 100%, I also think the president, and I believe in his sincerity on this matter, should prove to us that the government is serious. How come we have not had any banker arrested over this? this mm -hmm. the, the, the banks are the ones doing this stuff. How come we've not had any governor called to account? Or are they going to tell us they don't know that it's these governors that are converting their monthly allocations into dollars in the, uh, uh, into USDT? Let's be frank here. Let's call it a spade a spade. People need to cooperate with our president. The president is not going to come from Astro Rock and start to be doing all this thing by himself. He has given the body language. I want this thing to be shut down. Yeah. So let the ESCC director do what, what needs to be done. Let us see. Because, hey, in, in, in further year economics that I keep pushing, the only thing that deter people from coming to your neighborhood and uh, putting trash in your, in your compound is that you grab them and you deal with them in a violent way. Same way, if we, are going to, if we are going to tidy up our economy, I'm not going to say let it be free for all and start to deal, uh, deal with people without the law, but we know all we need to stop some bankers, especially at the topmost levels, 
from uh, 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 from uh, 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 collaborating with these foreigners to ruin our economy is to put some of them in jail, shut down a couple of banks. Okay. Sanusi did it now. When he removed five bank MDs, everybody sobered up. You got to do these things. And Indeed. also, some of the, the governors, the, the uh, uh, EFCC and some of the security agencies, they will know what is going on. So I want to encourage them. Yes, I know I'm on air. They need to support what the president is doing. Otherwise, it becomes a hollow claim. Mr. President, I do not expect him, no matter how much I criticize him, to come down from Aso Rock and go and be arresting bankers and go and be, arre uh, be talking against governors. He needs to be given the facts. Okay. And the security agencies know that. These things can be happening without the banks and uh, without the collusion of the banks. We are talking $26 billion. Yes. Okay, if I that... multiply that on my computer, I get error. Indeed. Okay, it's a lot of money. $26 uh, so... billion dollars that the CBN dollars. says does not know what exactly it was all about. And we say, Binance, exactly. give, us, give us data. Who are, your, who are your traders? Yes, there's banking, confidentiality. Binoc, Binoc clams up and says uh, no. But I'll tell you what, Okwe, um, this is not, yes. as you know, a, a technical a finance program. It's more of an all-commerce affair. So let's go so, through some yes. rudimentary uh, sort of uh, uh, explanation for our uh, ordinary viewers. Um, yes, uh, you know, there are uh, Tokwe Ogulolu, uh, he, he, when he comes around, yes, he's a hard-nosed technical economy. economic yes. program. But this is a more of a general interest. Now, Binance is an online exchange where uh, subscribers, users, can trade cryptocurrency. So we get into the area of speculation. Explain for the ordinary man who doesn't know very much, what is this noise about Binance and how has it become so dangerous that the uh, CBN wants it, not just wants it, has actually blocked it. And now they themselves announced that, you know what, we're removing ourselves from the Nigerian market altogether. We're not dealing with the Nigerian Naira again. And uh, I think today is the deadline they've set. Uh, tell us how, how that works, that they became uh, so dangerous, especially as they are not registered or regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Yeah, the, the, the primary premise of uh, platforms like Binance is because they provide what I call anonymity, where you can trade, just like somebody buying stock on the stock exchange. It's something like that. But in the case of Binance and these cryptocurrency uh, currencies, they provide anonymity, meaning that you, for instance, if you have a million dollars, you can that you got through any means or whatever, whether legal or Ill Ill illegal, you can then use it to buy what they call cryptocurrency, which really are just digital um, a, a currency that yes. are real. You cannot see it in the... And they provide a wallet. Money. They provide a wallet on yes, for you. they provide a wallet. Yeah, just like a bank account, they provide a wallet for you where you put your, 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 your money and from there, you speculate. It's basically speculating in other cryptocurrencies, hoping that it will go up or it will go down. But the main thing there that is giving government a, 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 a fever is that there is no transparency. So a money launderer, a, a criminal, the minute he gets that money into Binance, it's like it's gone. You can't trace it. So US and other uh, economies are afraid because all of a sudden, you have this undocumented economy that is competing with your normal currency. Yes. And you don't know who is doing it. Mm. You don't know whether they are terrorists. Mm -hmm. You don't know whether they mm -hmm. are thieves. Mm -hmm. And so they are supposed to have a KYC. You know, every bank, when you put your money in your bank, you have to provide all your information. You have to give them what they call KYC, know your customer. So what they are saying, what uh, uh, countries are saying, and I want to use to get this so that they can support the government on at least on this issue, is that you should have a KYC. We don't want terrorists to, to, run, to run over our country. We don't want people to take our money out. That this KYC that they do, yes, they may not, they, uh, uh, they, 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 under the cryptocurrency, uh, 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 their own uh, uh, terms of uh, running business, they don't disclose who, exa who exactly is behind that, that, that token. But it's a lie. They know. Because, yes, the wallet they give you is uh, anonymous. It doesn't well, have your name on it. Yes. It's difficult to know. But the, the, the wallet is tied to an identity. You give them your ID card. You give them your picture. You give them your address when you open the account. So the wallet really is tied to you. They are mm -hmm. just not disclosing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And U.S. has been able to make them 
to come to an agreement or an arrangement with the U.S. government. Yes. That is why the Binance in the U.S. is very different from the Binance in Nigeria, even exactly. though it's the same company. Exactly, exactly. Okay. You, you know, there are some things. To, yeah. Talking about uh, right. just digging a bit deeper uh, on this um, anonymity, uh, which is the key selling point here, uh, the anonymous aspect of yes. it, even though you've explained that. But customers are known or subscribers are known. Now, this is linked to what oh, they, they are known. In, in that world, they talk about, um, uh, they talk about a blockchain uh, of which Binance has its yes. own in-house brand. Uh, talk to us a bit uh, how this frustrates and uh, sort of protects Binance and its uh, wanting to remain anonymous. This blockchain device that frustrates the best of uh, prying eyes from government or intelligence. <laughs> yeah, because what the, this blockchain wants, the blockchain basically is a, uh, call it a, to use the layman language, is like anonymous uh, a system that once the transaction is done on it, you and I cannot decipher it. The uh, 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 crime uh, fighters cannot decipher it because it's in the air. It's just a set of figures. And unless you have that wallet address and the, the password to get into it, you don't know what's going on. You can see the transaction, but you don't know who <laughs> bought, who sold. Oh, they, they have what they call the airtime scan, where you can see every transaction going on. Even in Nigeria, even right now, anybody can go to airtime scan, you will see the transactions going on in Bitcoin. But you don't know who did it. You don't know where the money is. So that is where the KYC is, because Coinbase first started all of this, and or rather the US government first went after them. That we understand that we, we, this transaction is anonymous. It's supposed to be something where there is no individual tied to a particular wallet address. But this wallet address was created by somebody that you got their ID from, that you got their whatever from. So we want to know if they are coming from a certain country, you cannot let them do transaction on your chain or we're going to shut you down. Yeah. So they reach an accommodation with the U.S. Why wouldn't they reach accommodation with us? Okay, exactly. Yes, it's anonymous. Mm -hmm. Yes, you cannot know, but there's a way. That's why on the Binance, the, the U.S. Binance, and I have an account right there. Okay, there are some cryptos that are in the Nigerian Binance that is not in the one that you can see in America because Americas, they somehow, without they're making it public. They've reached some kind of accommodation with Binance USA. So a, a less uh, 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 shenanigan is going on there. And all we are saying is that they need to reach accommodation with us also. They might not necessarily give the exact names and whatever, but they should be able to follow some guidelines that CBN will give them to protect our own currency. Exactly. They know where the money came in. The, each of these things have an uh, 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 API address. So they cannot say, oh, they don't know where the money comes. It's a lie. They do. They the do. U.S. already proved it. They do. So, and But they don't want to deal with us like that. One. They believe that a uh, jungle, that they are going to get away. And to me, this is the point. Uh, 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 this is the time President Bola Tinumba Ahmed needs to prove this point to them. They are not going to go away. And Nigerian youths, you should be monitoring this. They cannot bribe people and then disappear. All right. But more importantly, too, let us be frank, Egmo. Uh, government needs to go also the old way. You can't do this thing one-sided. They also need to track down those who are uh, 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 siphoning money away through this balance. It's not the regular boy on the street who has $500. Yes. Okay, $26 billion did not come from the youths. That's right. It came from the big boys. That's why last week, when they went in there, the team went in every month. Once they get allocation, this madness starts on Binance. Everybody knows that. So who is getting money at the, at the end of the month? Is this governors. So I expect, with all due respect, for Mr. President to give instructions to the, the necessary agencies, let's make some examples. At least they can audit their own uh, 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 allocations. Where did these allocations go? The money was not given in Alimos go bags. It was given through our banking system. They must have transferred that money somewhere. So if if a, if a, if, if a governor got $1 billion in, in the allocation, and all of a sudden, 800 million of it has disappeared 
into somebody's peer to peer, whatever. They can track it. Let's not lie to ourselves, binance or no binance. And that and, the and, and, Nigerian and, government and, and that sort of you know, uh, that explains, uh, doesn't it, the importance of um, the, need, the, the need for them to be uh, registered or regulated, both of which the Securities and Exchange Commission has denied having anything to do with. In other words, they're operating as a law unto themselves that are dangerous for, dangerous for money laundering, dangerous for terrorism. And, um, but let me tie all of that quickly back to where you started from. You said you yourself have an account. So ordinarily, there's nothing really wrong in speculation. After all, the stock exchange is all about speculation too. Uh, but there's a way that this can be done responsibly and um, not this whole... I mean, this seems to be skewed, if that was the intention or not, towards dubious money and the laundering of it. Yes, 100%. It's even for the protection of the Nigerians themselves, even the youth that are crying. You know, and I'm speaking to the youth directly now, because I'm involved in this. It's like talking about Omega Pro. Over 200 billion was suffering from our economy very quietly. We are not even hearing much noise about it, despite me filing a, a action on EFCC against them. It is for your own protection because they're not registered. Okay, they can wake up one day, take your money and just disappear. And there's nothing you and I can do about it. We are not able to do anything about Omega Pro right now. Why? Because they were not registered with our agencies. So they have to register. Yeah. We are not saying, I understand the anonymity of transaction, but there are some guidelines they have to follow. Okay. There are some guidelines to protect the country where they operate. Netherlands is doing the same thing with them. UK is doing the same thing with them. Every responsible country is trying to make sure they reach an accommodation with these crypto exchanges. That's why they are only very active in all those shit old countries where nobody can track them. All <laughs> okay. those Bermuda okay. places you can okay. find Do them. Dr. Bamu, they want to do it. In uh, Dr. Dr. Bamu, yes. I've got to take a quick break now. Please stay with us. Uh, we'll be right back. Continue yes, with this conversation and take calls from our viewers as well. Stay with us, please. All right, sir. Okay, welcome back. And um, we're talking this morning about Binance, uh, the online exchange where subscribers or users can trade cryptocurrencies. It supports hundreds of them. And um, now they have said that they are exiting the Nigeria market. Our guest is Dr. Okwe Banwo, and he's been looking at some of the unsavory aspects, both in their professional conduct and indeed, um, you know, their operations as well. Uh, they are not registered in Nigeria by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, neither are they, they're not regulated or, or you know, or registered. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Mazio Korafo in Arochuku has come on the line. Mazio Korafo, do you have an account with Binance? <laughs> I don't have an account with them, bro. <laughs> I don't have, but you see, the major thing with Nigeria this morning, you're touching neither. The CBN. Sit, sit up with all these banking industries. Now, when you talk about this regulation, there is no regulatory system. They don't regulate anything. You see, when Sanusi came, he took a system that one hundred and fifty thousand naira is what you collect at the counter. Now go back to the bank and find out whether it was. You have to. Somebody is being kidnapped. It's why he told the other say, "We have gone to the bank to collect money. We go and say to them." Is it one of is it is it one of them? I think they took about a million. So the, the monitoring there is zero. That is why we have to say. Now you ask yourself that any bank or the finance or internet finance business from Nigeria go outside Nigeria and operate or purpose. But you see all that from outside Nigeria, they will just be operating, people will be operating, operating. Nobody cares. We lack that monitoring system. Now, they do this transaction with the connivance with the banking industries. They are not being monitored. Go to customer services of any bank in this country. You go there and pick the zigzag way, they will just ask a question for you. The same zigzag way, they will tell you that. But when you go to the accounting officer at the particular bank or your own bank, you will attend to you. Maybe you have business. Maybe you are the regular customer that transact what they want. 
Okay. This is the third thing is that form, but it's the accounting officer. You start asking them why they are appointed to person to be a county officer. So there are a lot of lapses. I blame CBN. I blame CBN all the states in this country because bank industries are not being monitored. Every day you see new banks coming, 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 all right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mazio Okora, for, for uh, calling in. And I indeed, I would like to really hear from uh, a lot of our viewers out there, youths especially, and indeed some who are not youths but are seeking to get on the bandwagon. I have seen people who are, there's no way you can call them youths, but they say, ah, is this what is going on? I mean, I need everything I can get, so teach me. Teach me how to go about it. And you, you find that there are a lot of seniors that are also now trying to get in there but one would like to hear from the youth because Dr. Banwo explained that they talk that look, there's nothing wrong with um, you know trading in uh, crypto uh, currencies per se, um, but it, it's it's all about the underhand way in which it is going on now. So I really do hope that some youths will call in uh, who also have knowledge on this, who have experience, even expertise. Let's hear it. Uh, what 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 is your perspective, especially? on the way uh, they have run into headwinds with Nigeria, the way, you know, uh, they, they are not being as cooperative as the Nigerian authorities want, and what you think generally for our security. Dr. Banwa has been talking about whatever his political differences with whatever party, he's a Nigerian and he's going to support Nigeria. And this was sabotaging uh, Nigeria. So uh, back to you, uh, Dr. Okwe Banwo. Um, it, oh, Professor, let me... Yes. Let me tell you, before you ask the question, you said something earlier where they, that they said they are leaving Nigeria. See, uh, it is the kind of shakara they do. Nigeria needs to understand that we are, we are strategic to these guys. We are the number one crypto trading country in the world. We are. These guys look at their balance sheets. That's they right. look at their accounts. They know how important we are. If they go, they are going to come back. After all, when we put historic fines on MTN, they made all this noise. We are going to leave. We are going to leave. Are they still not in Nigeria? Indeed. There's too much money they are making for them to just leave. We should call their bluff. We should find them. If U.S. can find them $4 billion, we also should find them $4 billion. We need money. We should find them that $4 billion. Hold those guys. The trial will be delayed. Snail speed. Okay? We will list all the charges. But then they will give them a judgment for nine months from now so that they will understand. By the time they are there for six months, nine months, Money will come out. By the way, this happened with Omega Pro, that company I was talking about that's, that, 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 that scammed Nigerians of $200 billion. One of their officers came to Nigeria. Some guys used ESCC to pick him up. They kept him in jail. Within a few weeks, they had to repatriate some of that money that they stole away for those guys. There you go. These guys, they will pay us once they know that we are serious. Indeed. Nigeria is being talked about everywhere by all these big countries. Let, they let, know let, our potential. Okay, let, let me bring on Mr. George, who has called in. Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you for calling. Uncle Yori, there is something I picked from your prologue. You said the finance executive that was arrested in America had confessed to the scene. They were and charged in America. The, the, and, the, and the founder, the, the, the founder of Binance, the founder of Binance has pled Binance, guilty. Yes and that he has agreed to refund the money. What we need to do in our own case, the same, I'm happy that they are in the hands of uh, Nur, that he's not retired, they can man maneuver. They should make sure that those ones that are caught do not leave. <laughs> See, they tell us the people that, that own that $26 billion. How could you have $26 billion in one year? It's not a small money. It's enough to turn things around in this, our country. And they should tell us who are the people. Who are the people that have 26 billion dollars to take away from this country, from our system, without documentation? We need to know that. It's, uh, I've been saying it that uh, Dr. Yemi Kadosu, the CBN governor, that he needs to go hard on the banks. These bank executives are aware of these people. They know that they connect together to do it. He has to step serious blows into them if he wants to succeed in this honors that is given to him. We cannot continue uh, like this, Uncle Yori. Indeed. We saw that country. Yeah. I had when uh, Dr. 
of Bible and Wood said Nigeria is number one in the, in the we, finance industry. We are the biggest market. We are the biggest market because it is a fraudulent market. Why must we be number one in anything that is fraud? The president should, if oh, it, oh, okay. it, 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 it's in the right direction, he should insist and make sure that these corporates are brought to book. Indeed. Well, thank you very much for uh, calling in, Mr. George, but um, I, I don't believe that uh, there's anything inherently fraudulent in cryptocurrency trading. Um, but but let, uh, let Okwe take it, take it on. Sorry, can you hear me? I think I'm, uh, my audio is... Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Now, now you're on. Okay. Okay. So I was saying that the, the, we need to make it a holistic uh, approach before they start respecting us globally. Our own local uh, uh, banks, as well as local uh, authorities, they also need to cover our own side of this. Somebody is aiding and abetting them. I hear about all this um, uh, anonymity. You don't know about blockchain. It's all a lie, right? Because every transaction that you do, you do it on a system. The system tracks your API. When you go to the ETA scan, you see the transactions. All right. So our, API, our, uh, API uh, that uh, you spoke uh, about. Sorry, agency. sir. API. Just you know, as I said, this is not that kind of a hardcore yes. detection. The API is the uh, identif uh, identifier of your machine, your con you, you know, your yes. machine, right? Yes. That's so in that way, yes, that's it, how it identifies where you are reacting you know, from. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They can understand where they can get, find out where the transaction took place. After all. The American FBI, they were able to prove that Binance was allowing terrorists to do transactions on their, on their system. It was not just talk now. They proved it in court. They had documents. So where did they get the documents from? Okay. Uh, okay. So we uh, also I, I, I beg your pardon. This. You know, the calls are coming in thick and fast. I'm so sorry for interrupting you. Uh, the calls are coming in thick and fast. And I want you to react to one of the things that our, uh, that, uh, that viewer, uh, Mr. George, uh, that he called in. You know, why should we be number one in anything fraudulent? And I was saying that, well, by definition, cryptocurrency isn't necessarily fraudulent. So I'm going to get you to react to that. But in the meantime, I have from Oshun. Um, who is on the line from Oshun? Peter. Peter in Oshun. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah, please go ahead quickly. Yeah, okay. So uh, my own... Uh, well done for the whole analysis and uh, the feedback we've had so far concerning the winners. But well, I just want to say this. Uh, is, is it not possible for... Can you hear me, sir? We can hear you. Okay. Is it not possible for the government to have a more strategic way to go about these things? And, and for the money that was said to be laundered or that was mentioned, this money came in through a bank. So... I believe that they should have a way to track, you know, the where this money came in from. Okay. Because it's more like a vague analysis to say that so so money came. So how do they if if they can't get the details from the Binance platform, so how do they now uh, you know say that this is the amount that was moved or what measure did they use in getting that amount? I think some things should have been done better and a more dialogue should have been done because no matter what it is, Binance has its own impact on the economy, whether even positive or negative. So a platform as big as Binance could, shouldn't just be kicked off at a digital age like this. So those are my few okay. uh, thoughts I, I, I want to say concerning the whole uh, event that's happening currently. And thank you thank indeed, you, Peter, for contributing them. And uh, I think I'll make a mop them up along with my other uh, question. Uh, uh, let him try and react to um, uh, the viewer, George, saying that why, sh when, in relation to the statistical fact that Nigeria is the biggest cryptocurrency market in, in, in Nigeria, I mean, uh, in Africa. Uh, so there's no it's way... The world. It's, it, actually it, it, it's, it's actually the world. It's actually it's actually the world. Well, that's what led George to say, why should we be number one in anything fraudulent? And I had opined, wanting your comment crypto, to me that. Crypto is, is crypto not... inherently fraudulent? Would you agree with that? No, it's not fraudulent. It is it is gambling, put it in a, in a, in a, in the very base sense of the word. So if you say gambling it is. is bad, then maybe it's it gambling. is. Because most of the cryptocurrency stuff 
you really can't use them for anything. Maybe a few of them, like Bitcoin, that can actually be used for transactions. Most of them are never used for anything, even though they say they can use it. But the truth of the matter is that in an economy where you have almost half unemployed, what do you want them to do? So when there's an opportunity where they can speculate and maybe make money, why would you want to stop them? If you, if you say cryptocurrency is fraudulent, then pools betting should also be banned. Sports betting. Exactly. Be I was going to, to say, for, I was so, going to say, is this not an ultra, <laughs> is this not an ultra sophisticated uh, Baba Jebu? It will become 100%. Top... So if Baba Jebu, if Baba Jebu is not illegal, why should, look, let me just give you a good example. You can make a lot of money in crypto and you can lose a lot of money. As long as you understand that going in. In the last two weeks alone, a, a, a cryptocurrency called Shiba Inu has gone up by 370%. I know because I have some funds in there. It was stunning. But that may look good to you. And you say, oh, let me go and start rushing. But there have also been times last year where $100,000 worth of cryptocurrency dwindled all the way to $7,000, lost 93%. Yes. So you can lose a lot of money. And you can also gain a lot of money. So and it is not inherently illegal. It's just that it's gambling. And it, if government wants to ban cryptocurrency, then they should ban uh, uh, sports betting. If they're not going to do that, then what we should need to do is clean it up. Just like the sports bettors, right? They have to follow rules. They have a commission that goes after them to make sure they play fair by people who are coming to gamble on Arsenal on, on, or Chelsea. So same way, if people want to risk their little money they don't have to go and be speculating on cryptocurrency, they have to do something because there is no job, right? Indeed. So all the government should then do is protect them to make sure that while at least let the, uh, the field be level, if they're going to lose their money, let it be lost on transparent grounds. Not like an Omega Pro kind of company from Dubai that nobody is talking about. They come into the country. They don't register as a forex organization. They don't register their organizations. They take this money. Then overnight, they just disappear. You just they mentioned saying, Dubai. Oh, you just you mentioned Dubai. Like sorry, Okwe. Uh, sorry to interrupt you again. You just mentioned yes. Dubai. Um, we just said that speculation, gambling, call it what you will, and you mentioned Dubai. Um, uh, isn't it haram? Well, it should be because uh, my brother who spoke said, why should Nigeria be number one in the, uh, in the thing that is corrupt? No, we are not number one in what is corrupt. Crypto is not corrupt. Dubai is the number one country for corruption. Almost all these fake schemes, they always come into Dubai. Go and check it. From Omega Pro to many of those MML, those uh, 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 businesses that come, mop up our economy and disappear into thin hair, they come from Dubai. Why is our Nigerian government not taking them up on that? And Indeed. it's supposed to be around. I hear you. Indeed. But the Dubai government is protecting them. I know this for a fact because I'm the lead counsel for over for thousands of people who are suing Omega Pro globally on this camp that they did. And this and is another. Not any help. That, and that's another yeah. danger. Uh, uh, okay, sorry for jumping in. Here. That's another danger. Yeah. There are known. There are notorious um, um, scammers within the whole cryptocurrency. This exchange, for instance, there are pure scammers um, and, that, and that have sunk people. The entire life savings that have been in there, you've put it in that particular exchange, and suddenly you find your retirement funds, you're penniless. That isn't emphasized e uh, enough, perhaps. What is emphasized that, ah, crypto is the in thing now, uh, I, I'm trading crypto, exactly. I'm going to make money. And people are not seeing the destruction and destitution that it brings about. It's just as well that Nigeria has come in on it and said, you know, thus far and no further, uh, Mr. Binance and, and all the other it, cryptocurrency platforms. It's a gambling operation. If they, if they, they could make those who are doing a, a, a football betting to register and follow regulations, then crypto organizations should be registered and they should follow some very, very strict. It's one thing for you to gamble and then your team lost and you lost your money. But it's another thing for you to put your money there and then the crypto organization just wake up in the money and disappear with the money. Okay. Without giving accounting, without telling you exactly. you lost your money. That is danger. And uh, that is what the youth, all of the, many of the youths are there, they know what I'm talking about. People that, come in with that, I've been begging the youths to overnight. call in. 
The youths have been begging yeah, them to call in. They are not calling in. Let me see if, if Ola in Kaduna is a youth. Good morning, Ola in Kaduna. Do you have an account with a cryptocurrency account? Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Go ahead. I used to have those accounts, but I actually have to jettison them because this $26 billion that we're talking about is not just government money alone. If a chunk of that money is the money that is siphoned from the citizens of this country, you know, some years back, about two years now, they made me to sell my property, and I put $9.5 in what you call that view. It's a Ponzi scheme. That Ponzi scheme, they will come and collect money from people. Then there was another one that came. They call it Club 89. Then there's another one that came just recently, MFTE. You know, it is true by now, take our money. And they say you go to future wave of that. So if you go to the regular bank, you will not even trace them. But they'll use those kind of other payment outlets. So the money that you are seeing when they say 26 billion, when I calculated the money they took in that deal, from Lagos to Kanu, people were putting on 10 million. So people who operate this Ponzi scheme, they hand under the binary thing to take money away from Nigeria. And at a point, we just woke up because my, my 9.5 actually became 13 million. When I was about to just withdraw, we couldn't see them again. Hmm. And all over Nigeria, I think it came on television, some newspaper took it. If you check the money that they took away from poor Nigerians that time, it was more than a billion. That's just that deal. And we talk about several of them like that. So when I saw it, I had to close down all the wallet and all of that. Uh. All right, then. Well, thank you very much, Ola, for calling in and uh, contributing uh, that. Uh, Ola was speaking there. Uh, he, he even he brought in another thing, the Ponzi schemes. Uh, uh, we, yes. we don't have time to go into that, but that is well known. You, actually, what that, what that is said to be is, you know, you just are paying off people by new entrants, and it gets to a stage where it's unsustainable, and then the whole thing collapses. But... Uh, I, I'm so thank you very much, Ola, for calling in and giving us uh, some uh, personal experience because we're just making the point that this Bernanza uh, is effectively a gambling, it's like an online gambling. Uh, maybe you could say we're oversimplifying it, uh, but that is what it is. And that's why I asked Okwe and he gave his answer as to whether or not this was haram. Can Muslims, uh, if they say we're the, we're, we're the largest market, know. You, you, you didn't commit yourself one way or the other, but you did I say that. I don't know about Muslims. But these things, but like these that, things are coming out of Dubai. Uh, yes, Dubai government is even protecting them. I'm, I'm not joking about this. I don't say this stuff uh, uh, lightly. We have them on video attending the events of some of these commas like this Omega Pro, I keep saying. And when you ask them to hold them accountable for you, they, they ignore your letters. They ignore your protest. So this finance thing, as, as good as some of you may think, yes, I don't encourage anybody to go and gambling in, to go and gamble in crypto because you don't do anything with this crypto. So don't tell me it's just currency trading. There is really nothing. Most of those cryptocurrencies, they are basically somebody launch a project. I know because I have a crypto. They launch a project. <laughs> uh, they launch. They want to do a project. Yes. So they launch the cryptocurrency as a means of raising funds for it. That's why they call it a token. So it's like saying you want to build a church building and it's going to cost a hundred billion, for instance. And you are saying your church members should donate money to it. And in exchange, you are going to give them what is called a token of appreciation. Mm -hmm. That's what crypto is. Mm -hmm. That token of appreciation is that thing in the air that you give them. It has Indeed. no value. Indeed. There's no value attached. Indeed. Then they then take that token. It's like taking a letter of appreciation you got from your bank, then taking it to an exchange. And then you are exchanging it among yourself like a button. Let's say they were to give you a button I for contributing you. to your church you. building. Yeah. You don't own any part of that building. You don't own any part of that company. They use it to raise money for that company, right? But they give you a button. That's the token, literally. So that token, one day somebody then say, why don't we put this on an exchange so that people can exchange it among themselves? And That's then, how cryptocurrency started. Pro, pro, it's exactly. like baseball cards. Well, baseball cards have no value. It's such an but exciting... But you can buy 
It's such an exciting yeah. subject, Dr. Okwebanwo, that um, we've actually run out of time. It just seems like 15 minutes ago wow. when we started. Um, but I, I want to wow. thank you very much for your insight, uh, bringing this in, and also to thank Ola in Kaduna who called in. For some reason, all the other youths, millions of them that are watching this, decided to give it a miss. I'm not calling in anything, Ojari. I don't know. But they are exiting. Binance is exiting the Nigeria market. It has put out very elaborate directions as to how Nigerians can, you know, withdraw their, uh, their, their, their what, 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 funds, just withdraw it from there, and um, we're, we're leaving the market. But they will be back. They will be back. It, it will, well, but they have to go since they can't comply with what we are asking for, which is just be transparent. That $26 billion, the central bank governor wants to know where did it come from? What was it used for? Who are the people behind it? And you say, no, can do. And then go now. So thank you I very mean, much. They will comply. They will comply eventually. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much, Dr. Okweban. We're joining us remotely from the, the U.S., lawyer, public affairs analyst, and as he just said, a Binance account holder. Thank you very much. <laughs> U.S. one. Thank you. U.S. one. Okay, so that's that our program wonderful. today then. Do please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folarin. Bye-bye for now.